Hi there, welcome back to Cooking with Danny. Today we've got a real amazing dish for you. It's a real, real super quick and easy one to do. Great one for the family, cooking with, with the kids. It's going to be a sesame crusted uh, fillet of sea bream with a stir fry of vegetables, a really amazing garlic, ginger and chili uh, dressing. And we're gonna finish it with some sweet potato and fresh orange as well. As ever, I've got my trusty uh, companion, Adam. Uh, he's going to just uh, be prepping down all the stir fry vegetables. Now, in the restaurant, we, uh, we, we cut all the vegetables down to what we call a julienne size, which is uh, basically a posh word for strips. Um, so we're just gonna cut down strips of carrot, strips of pepper, courgette, um, red onion, real wonderful uh, leafy green vegetable uh, pak choy and a real interesting mushroom which is called enoki which originates from Japan and it's just got a real beautiful earthiness an amazing texture as well you can see that there real different interesting looking mushroom there so I don't know if you can just uh, cut some beautiful strips of vegetable for us yeah the sweet potato, this is another technique which is really, really, really simple, but it's such a big, makes such a big difference when you're eating, uh, eating sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are ever so rich, super high in really, really good carbohydrates and fiber. Um, so we take our sweet potatoes like this, we literally just dress them in beautiful uh, British rapeseed oil, salt them, and then pop them into tin foil. Wrap them up like a Christmas present, and then just pop them in straight into the oven like that. And they're gonna take around 40 minutes to an hour. What happens with that there is it's just gonna, because they're being cooked in their skins, none of the flavor of the sweet potato is gonna escape and all the goodness is gonna be locked into it. So it's gonna be super tasty. Next, we're gonna prepare the fish. We've got beautiful fillets of Cornish sea bream here. These have been filleted for us. If you ever go to your fishmongers or supermarket, I'd always recommend um, asking the fishmonger to fillet the fish for you. Uh, the last thing you wanna be doing is pulling guts and chopping off um, uh, fish's heads at home. So we take our fish. We're just gonna lightly, lightly season it now. With all fish, I always like to season it about five to 10 minutes before we're gonna cook it. The salt just helps firm the fish up. Sea bream is a super, super, super delicate fish. When it's cooked perfectly, it's super flaky. And the salt's just gonna help, one, draw the best flavor of the fish out possible. And two, just firm it up so that it's not falling apart in the pan for you. On this tray here, We've lightly toasted off some sesame seeds, about five or six minutes, 160 degrees until they're light golden brown, and then just lay the sea bream fillets in there. Just pop them on there, ever so gently. You don't have to use any great force. Just lay them on there, pick them back up, lay them down again, and just keep doing this until you can't see the skin anymore. This dish is packed super, super, loads and loads and loads of nutrients and vitamins. Sesame seeds are a great source of vitamins as well. And all the beautiful fresh vegetables which are gonna be cooked super quick. Over on there, you man. Oh, really, thank you. 
So while we carry on preparing everything else, we just pop that over here when it's be cooked. Okay. So I'm just gonna help Adam here prepare the vegetables. You don't have to cut them into strips. You can cut the vegetables pretty much however you, the way, way you want to really. Um, I just find for the consistency of the cooking of the vegetables, it's, re it's really important for me that they are cut the same sort of size and shape so that they all cook nice and evenly. Most importantly with a stir fry, you want them to keep really, really nice and crisp. The last thing you want them to be is overcooked and soggy. I'll race you Adam if you like. Oh. With any good stir fry as well, it's always important to use lots and lots and lots of spices, and aromatic vegetables and fruits. So the next stage of the stir fry dish is the, we're going to make our sauce. So into a pan, touch of the rapeseed oil. We're gonna take our, this is uh, very similar to a red Thai style paste. So we've got chilies, we've got ginger, garlic, lemongrass, um, and honey. And we've just been blended it into a paste. We're just gonna saute that off. And just cook that out. So at times like this, I really wish that cameras could pick up the smell. Really, really amazing. Really important to cook this out quite well. Don't be scared to leave it in the pan. It's not going to burn. Just keep moving it. And all that's gonna do now is take all that rawness away from the chili and the garlic, and you're gonna be left with just the aromatic flavor of it. To that now. We're gonna just add some coconut milk to that now. Again, it's so important that you really cook that out well. So well that it burns the house down. Um, because it just brings out all the natural sweetness of the chilies, the garlic. You need to cook that raw flavor away. Um, otherwise, you know, you're gonna be tasting chili and garlic uh, on your palate um, come bedtime. So once that's cooked out, Add your coconut milk. As you can see in this one here, it's starting to look like a beautiful sauce. And I'm also gonna add a dash of honey. Counteract all that heat with some sweetness. Pop that back over here on the stove. And you just warm that back through. Adam, do you wanna have a little taste of that? Make sure you're happy with it, Chef. Okay, yes, Chef, I'm gonna put a little bit more salt in. Good lad. Okay, next we're gonna move on to the cooking of the stir fry. As you can see, Adam here has prepared all the vegetables there beautifully. Again, like we've said before, it's so important that they cook sim similar size so that the, when they're um, cooking in the pan, you have a nice, even cook on them. Real good mix together, all those beautiful colors. This is already starting to smell absolutely amazing. That's very, very seasoned. Lovely. Just make a quick point of pointing out this to the fish. That fish there now, it's been sat on there for about five or 10 minutes. As you can see, it's soaked up all the sesame seeds. That's gonna make a beautiful crust for the fish. And you can just feel by touching that fish there, it's just firmed the pepper slightly and will be ever so easier to uh, handle when cooking. I said, take that off now, please, Adam. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> now, the beauty of cooking a stir fry with uh, rapeseed oil is that it can go to a much higher temperature 
uh, than the majority of most oils on the market. So with rapeseed oil, you can go up to all about 200, 220 degrees, which is what you need to cook your stir fry. You want it to be in the pan and out as quickly as possible. Swap these over here. For the fish, a non-stick pan is essential. Nice bit of oil in the bottom there. And you just want to be able to feel the heat coming off that pan before you add the fish. Now with a lot of fish, especially bream, sea bass, mullet, the sort uh, where you're cooking a whole fillet, a little trick of the trade is to place the fish down flesh side first. In you go, you want to be able to hear that noise. That's how you know the pan is hot enough. And then just turn that straight away. And what that happens there is just going to help the fish relax in the pan a lot sooner and it's not going to bow up and you're going to lose all your sesame seeds off the fish. Just in there like so. And just let that gently fry away. Then onto the stir fry. See the pan's already starting to get smoky. In with the rapeseed oil. Any other oil at this point now would be setting on fire. You don't want that to be happening. In we go with the stir fry. Just keep moving it nice and fast. Nice and fast. As you can see, the pan isn't even on the heat and the oil's allowing the vegetables to carry on cooking because we've taken it to a super, super high temperature. And it's not burnt. The fish, what we're looking for when we're cooking fish, as soon as that hits the pan, you can see that the, the, the flesh of the fish has gone from translucent to white and all the way around. And as you can see, just the middle bit there now is what needs cooking. So what we're gonna do is just place that into the oven, or you could pop it under a, a warm grill for a few moments, just while we finish cooking our stir fry. Light bit of color on the stir fry. Adam, could you open that one up for me, please? Yep. Little bit of seasoning. Please. Uh, yeah. And then just a couple of spoons of our stir fry sauce. That comes out simple, it's quick and easy as that. Now when we're coming to preparing this dish, we have our sweet potatoes which we placed into the uh, oven earlier. So they've had about 40 minutes. As you can see when we cut that in half, it's kept all its natural sweetness and juices inside. The smell coming off these pans and plates of food right now is absolutely stunning. This is simple cooking at its best. I'm just going to take a nugget of that, another nugget of that, another nugget of that, pop that over here, pass us over some of those uh, shoots down. Yes. Lovely. As you can see now, the fish is near enough all the way white all the way through. Next stage. 
second. On your customers as well. No, mate. Show you what we're going to do. Maybe on. Oh, I love it. So the next stage, let's take our stir fry, stir fry veg. Some of the enoki mushrooms, which we haven't cooked for a very good reason. Let's explain just now. I'm going to take some of our Vita greens. These are really interesting, what we call a sunflower shoot. They've just got a real amazing texture. They're going to keep help that crunch that we're looking for. Some micro pak choy. And a little bit of micro red cabbage. And the fish head. Good. Good. So, take your stir fried vegetables. I'm just going to dress this as if you was making a beautiful salad. Some fresh orange. Let's toss all that together. Place all that into a bowl. Couple of nuggets of sweet potato. I've opted to use sweet potato rather than a noodle or a rice, just because I think it's a better texture and a little bit more filling and so much more nutritious and better for you. Once the fish has started to take on a little bit more colour, and our sesame seeds are beautiful toasted, lemon juice, tiny pinch more salt, out of the pan. A few more of our sunflower shoots on there. And then just drizzle a little bit more of our stir fry sauce over the top. There we have our stir fried vegetables, sesame crusted sea bean.